Hey what's up guys, my name is Alex and in this screencast I'm going to show you how to get up and running with jQuery validation. jQuery validation is a plugin for jQuery that makes validation really easy. To illustrate and to teach the basic principles of this plugin, I'm going to take a form and I'm going to make it bulletproof. For instance, here's a pretty common input, one where you enter your email address. If I enter an email which is clearly erroneous and click away from the input, you'll see that I get an error message. If I remove the email entirely, it gives us a different error message. If I sign in with an email address that is already associated with an account, for example, alex at email.com I happen to know is associated with an account, it tells us that an account with this email already exists and asks us if we want to sign in. If I change this to a different email, you can see that we get no error. Something that's really, really nice about this plugin is that it gets out of the user's way. See as I click through all of these inputs, I don't type anything, I'm not bombarded with errors. It's not until I type some input, click away from the input, that I get an error. And then I have a chance to fix it, and as I fix it, I get immediate feedback once it's fixed. Which is pretty cool in my opinion. You can take things a bit further than simply comparing passwords or entering valid emails. For instance, here's a field to enter a phone number. If I put in some text, it says please enter only digits. If I enter in some random digits, it tells us, tells us to please specify a valid phone number. Again, if I press submit, or rather sign up now, without filling in the rest of this data, all of the errors get highlighted, including the checkbox. And as I check and uncheck it, it tells if the field is required. This is all really not advanced, but very comprehensive, and I didn't have to write a lot of code to do it. You saw previously if I had this Ajax remote validation. I'll teach you how to do that later on. This was literally one line of JavaScript using jQuery validation. It's really impressive like that. To get started with jQuery validation, you need to reference jQuery and jQuery validation. You can use a tool like Bower to install it locally. For this tutorial, I'll just use the CDN. So if I go to Sublime, I'll create a new file. I'll call this index.html. And I'm going to add a reference to the two files that I need. Now, I said I would take the form that I showed you previously and make it bulletproof. And by the end of the series, we will be at a similar stage. But just to illustrate the very basic principles, I'm going to make a much more simple form. I'm going to create a form. I'm just going to call it register form. And inside of here, I'm going to put a simple input for an email. And a simple input submit. Notice how the submit button has an ID, uh, submit button. Next, I'm going to create a JavaScript file to hold our validation code. I'm going to call this validation.js. And I'm going to add a reference to it from our index file beneath the reference to jQuery validation. Great. Inside of my JavaScript code, and remember I'm referencing, referencing jQuery here, so I can say uh, register form dot validate. And I refer to register form here because that's the ID of the form. I can then pass some options to the form. And look how easy this is. If I, by the way, if I just go to the browser and I open this, You'll see that it's not very impressive, I know. But when you press the sign up button, it actually does issue a HTTP request. If I look in the network tab, you'll see that when I press sign up, it issues a request to index.html because I didn't specify a custom target. And it does succeed, even though there is no email. And if I enter a gibberish email, that will still accept it. We have no validation at this time. If I go back to my JavaScript code, I can specify some rules. I can say for the email input, and what I'm referring to here is the name attribute of the input. So if I return to the HTML, notice how its name attribute is equal to email. I say for the input with this name, use these rules. I'm going to set required to true, and I'm going to set email to true. And I'll save this, return to the browser, refresh the page, and watch this. As I press sign up, nothing happens. Uh, okay. My validation file was mistyped, so let me just add a correct reference to that. Validation, looks good to me. So now when I press sign up, see how it tells us this field is required. And as I start to enter an email that's not a valid email, 
it tells us please enter a valid email address. If you do not like the error message, in particular, I don't really like the fact that it quite generically says this field is required. You might want to say, please enter a valid email or something to that effect. You can go back, you, what you can do is you can add a second argument really that says messages. And similarly, you specify the name of the input and then you say the name of the validation method. So required is a validation method, so is email. And you can say that when this validation method fails, here is the message to use. So we can say, please enter an email address. And then when we have the validation email fail, we can say, please enter a valid email address. I'll save that, refresh the page, and now look, when I press sign up, it says, please enter an email address. And as I start to put in gibberish, it puts, please enter a valid email address. Notice how I embedded a small amount of HTML there. It's really cool. Let's extend our form a little bit. So rather than simply having just an email, we'll also have two fields, both of which will have type password. Ensuring that the type is equal to password masks the input with stars or circles. The placeholder for this first input will be password. And the second placeholder is going to be re-enter password. Cool. And I'm also going to add an ID for this first password and you'll see why in a second. Oh, and I'll also give these more better names than email. So we'll call this one password and we'll call this one password2. And so what I want to do is I want to say password is required. And I'll say password2 is required. And as simple as that, these fields are required. However, if I do enter in some valid data, it's usually the case that you want to ensure that the password and the confirmed password are the same on the client. Doing that using jQuery validation is also very easy. What we'll do is, is we'll return to the script file and we'll extend this and we'll say required true. And we're going to use this method called equal to. And we say that we want this to be equal to password. And what we're referring to here is not the name attribute, but the ID attribute signified by the pound symbol before the identifier. Because remember, I gave this first input the ID of password. So it's going to verify that password2 is equal to the input with the ID password. So let's check this out. If I register again, alex at email.com, I put in some gibberish, it says, please enter the same value again. So I'm not actually sure what I typed, so I'll type quite clearly password, password, and now I can submit the form with no trouble. As you can see in the request query string, we have the passwords. Obviously in a real application, this would be a post request, but for simplicity's sake, I'll keep it as a get request. Something else that I think is pretty typical in 2015 is for people to want to verify that the password or rather validate that the password is at least reasonably secure by saying that it has to be longer than a certain number of characters and that it has to contain both upper and lowercase parameters, um, characters, sorry. There is no built-in method to do this, so we're going to have to define our own. In the next video, I'll show you how to define your own validation methods. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the second video.